In this video, we're going to be seeing how to set up Kali from scratch using VirtualBox. In the other video, we showed you how to use the pre-prepared virtual machine image, which you can use with VMware or with VirtualBox, so you don't have to install Kali. However, if you choose that you want to install Kali from scratch, you still can do that. You can do that using VMware and you can do that using VirtualBox. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do it using VirtualBox because in the other video, we showed you how to use VMware. So here we assume that you've already downloaded the ISO image, the ISO image from the Kali website and you opened your Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a new VM. You can do it either from this button over here or you can go into machine and create new. We're going to give it a name, in this case, Kali 2021, and I'm going to select the type. I'm going to go with Linux, Debian 64 bit. We'll click on next, and here we can choose the memory size. So how much memory do you want to give your VM? I'm gonna go with two gigs of memory, and from there on, it's pretty much straightforward. Just click on next until you reach the file location and size for the virtual hard drive. So I'm going to expand this a little bit to 40 gigs and I'm going to click next and move on. I did mention this before, but I'm going to reiterate it again because this is a common problem that comes up a lot with our students. So let me re-emphasize this here. Whatever you choose in the network settings here in your Kali, you should make sure that it's identical in the other machines in your lab. So let's say here we're selecting the network interface or the network configuration to be NAT. If I have another target like Metasploitable, for example, which you'll get to know later on, you want to make sure that it's also NAT. If here you choose Bridge, you want to make sure that in the other machine, you also use Bridge. This is how you allow these virtual machines, Kali and your other VMs to communicate with each other. So you wouldn't have any issues when you're trying to scan and break into and hack other machines. So keep that in mind if you're having any connectivity issues, please make sure and double check that you have the network settings both on your Kali and your other lab machines to be identical. To be able to install Kali from scratch, I need to assign the ISO image that we downloaded to the machine. And to do that, I'm going to storage. I'll find the controller for the IDE. It's going to be empty at the time being because I haven't assigned a CD to it. And I'm going to click on this small CD icon on the right and I'm going to choose a disk file. Now I've already done this before, so it's sort of memorized or remembered what I chose earlier. But if you're doing this from scratch, you're gonna have to click on choose a disk file and go and find your ISO image. In this instance, I already have it here, so I could just click on it, but let me show you how you can do it. So we're going to click on choose a disk file and I'm going to find the ISO image. Here it is. I'll click on open and you'll notice that it changed in the left panel. I click on OK, and that now allows me to boot my virtual machine from the drive. Now, I'm going to try and start the machine, and you might get a pop-up that says that the VM cannot find the drive, so you're gonna have to go and select it manually. Give it a couple seconds, and you'll see that the Kali machine starts to boot. From there on, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is click next, next most of the time. So I'm going to be fast forwarding the video and just stopping in the places where it could make a difference. So let's go ahead with this. This is where you define the host name or in Windows language, the computer name. What is it that you want your computer to be called? So I'm going to call it Hackers Academy. You can skip the domain name and this is where you specify your username. So it used to be that Kali would allow us to use the user root. It no longer is the case since Kali 2020. And we talk about this in other videos. Why is that the case? So for now, I'm just going to type my name here. This is going to be my username and I'm going to set a password. And then we can continue. This is where we define how do we want our drive or our hard drive to be partitioned. Do we want it to be multiple partitions or one partition? So if we're looking at it from a Windows perspective, in Windows you could have the C drive, you could have the C drive and the D drive, C drive, D drive, E drive, and so on. You can do something very similar with Linux. However, I'm just gonna leave it as is, as default for now, because that's the easiest thing to do, and I'm going to click on continue.
And here we get to another distinction in Kali 2021. This is where you can select which desktop environment do you want to use. So in the previous videos, we talked about the differences in the desktop environments, how one can be fancy but resource intensive, while others can be less fancy but much faster and lighter. So it's completely up to you which one do you want to use here. You can see that XFCE is selected as a default desk environment in Kali. If you want something fancier, you can go with GNOME. It's completely up to you. You can actually choose more than one. As you've seen in the previous video, you can switch between them. So let's say I want to go with XFCE. I'm going to choose that and then I'm going to click on continue. From there on, you can just follow what I'm doing in the video step by step. And before you know it, you will have Kali up and running. Once Kali reboots, you'll get back to the login screen, type in your username and the password that you set up during the installation. And here we go, it's all done. You have completed installing Kali from scratch on VirtualBox. When it comes to VMware, which is my preferred software, I do prefer VMware over VirtualBox. You can do pretty much the exact same steps. The one thing that will differ a little bit is the interface of the VMware software. So it's the same steps, slightly different interface. You still have to create a new VM. You still have to select the network interface when it comes to the VM, whether you want it to be NAT or bridge, and you still have to find the ISO and boot the VM from the ISO from there on. It's going to be exactly the same steps. Once you're done, let's move on to the next section.